Today's episode of the Dog Training Revolution is sponsored by PetFlow.com slash Zach George. Today, you're gonna meet Miss May, the German short-haired pointer, and she is a bundle of energy. I'm gonna show you the beauty of the surprise stay training exercise so that your dog will listen to you no matter what. Click thumbs up for another episode of the Dog Training Revolution. Also, make sure you're subscribed. Like me on Facebook. I'll have a link in the description. Think about the process you currently go through to get dog food, right? You're running low, so you add to your to-do list, get dog food. Then you have this lingering chore for the next two or three days, but that kind of gets in the way of life, doesn't it? With petflow.com slash Zach George, you can finally seamlessly eliminate this chore from your life. All you have to do is select the food that you want and how often you want it delivered, edit or cancel this at any time for any reason. Plus, you'll have the peace of mind knowing that you're supporting the dog training revolution and positive training. Enter code Zach20 when you check out, you'll receive 20% off of your first order. Now, recently I had a chance to meet with Allison and her dog, Miss May, along with her two lovely daughters, Alex and Mallory. Allison, tell me a little bit about Miss May's personality. What is she like? She's very energetic. She's very affectionate. She likes to be around us all the time. What kind of issues are you having with her that you would like to improve? When guests come over and she's jumping uncontrollably, you know, I'd like to tame that down a little. Now she's pretty young, only six months old. She's five months old. Five months old, okay. Yeah. Let's meet her. She's a pretty dog. Miss May definitely has a lot of energy. She's not gonna be settling down anytime soon. Sit. So she's got a solid sit. I love how she's looking at you, by the way. She's just really focused on you. You could do this. <laughs> and what else have you taught her? Stay. Great. And you're gonna walk away. Stay. Stay. Ooh, she's thinking about breaking. Stay. Stay. She's thinking. Stay. That's the third time she's flinched. What? Oh, did you call her to you? No. At least you're honest. Ideally, we don't want to set them up to fail that much. You can see here, I've got a toy already. She, I mean, I haven't even done anything with this. She's instantly identified it as something she's interested in. So why don't you go ahead and have her sit and stay again. Stay. As predicted, you asked her to stay, I squeaked the toy. Of course she's gonna be distracted by that. Before we can have our dogs behave around guests, we have to teach them how to stay when they're minorly distracted. I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. You hold this, sit, and squeak only when I tell you to, okay? Stay, go ahead, look at me. Yes, good. Do you see what we did there? We had to stay with a minor distraction for less than a second. That's where we start. Stay, go ahead, look at me. Yes, wow, really good. In order for you to go to the next level on teaching her to stay when guests come over, she has to stay in the presence of a squeaky toy like this. Do you think you can get her to do well with that training drill over the next couple of days or so? Sure. So our goal is clear here. Allison wants Miss May to stay when family and friends come over and when she's heavily distracted and just in general. But Allison has some work to do in order to solidify her mutual communication with Miss May. Once she tightens up stay a little bit, I'll be able to show her and you a very effective training exercise that will teach your dog how to stay under a huge variety of different training scenarios. I'm back to check in with Miss May and her family to see how they're doing. Tell me how training is going. It's going well. It seems like she's responding. So when you squeak the toy, she's pretty good about staying and, yes. and listening to you? Yes. That's good. So now she's primed perfectly to go to the next level with this and learn how to stay when more distracted and when she's not expecting it. At least that's my goal today, so I'm hoping we can do that. The girls are next door playing with the neighbors so that we can focus on training Miss May. That might make things easier today because whenever you're doing like serious distraction training, you want to have as many variables unchanged as possible as you phase in this concept of staying when you want to go if you're Miss May. I like to call the training exercise that we're gonna to cover today a surprise stay. It's natural to make the assumption that when we tell our dogs to stay while doing a training exercise, for example, that they should then channel that discipline when we're out and about and ask them to stay. But it doesn't quite work that way. So what we need to do is merge these two types of training sessions together. That is a setup stay and a more spontaneous stay. We're gonna create a hybrid training session. Last time I was here, we were starting to get some traction with Miss May on staying when I squeaked the toy. I'm curious to see how she does with that right now. 
You have been doing a very good job, Allison. That, that's impressive. That's way better than last time. Now, how much time did you put in teaching her that? Probably two 15 minute sessions. Yes. That's all it takes when you just commit to it. So I'm satisfied that she's good about staying when she hears an auditory distraction like a squeaky toy. Now I want to make it a little bit tougher and bring some movement to it and see how she does with that. Stay. Ah. And this is like algebra for dogs, telling them to stay when there's a fun, exciting, squeaky toy. That's gonna take a second for them to register. Rather than just throwing it this time, I'm gonna try and make it a little bit easier for Miss May. This is key, stay. Ah, yes, good. Did you see that bit of restraint that she used that time? That was really good. I'm gonna try and up the level of distraction now. Sit, stay. Up here, I'm trying to get her eyes on me voluntarily. If I have to cheat a little bit and use chicken, I'm fine with that because it gets her eyes off the, uh, off the distraction and on to me. If you don't have your dog's eyes, you don't have your dog. Stay. Up here, look at me. Miss May, no ma'am, up here. Yes, good, that was such a good moment right there. Ultimately, our goal is when our dog is faced with a major distraction to look at us as their default. That way they can check in with us and say, hey mom, is it okay if I go and chase that distraction or do you want me to stay? And you can teach them to generate this concept of listening to you from within. Much more powerful, much more potent way to teach. Our next step is to start mixing up the types of distractions. The more unfamiliar a distraction is, generally speaking, the more likely our dog is to be thrown off by it. Now, how many of your dogs at home like water bottles? So I'm gonna make some noise with the water bottle. Let's see what she does. Her interest in that was intense. Thank you. Stay. Yes. What did I do? I just let her look at the distraction this time. Stay. Yes. Remember, when things are moving and making sounds, they're more distracting to our dog. Yes, good job. And that's what I was waiting for. I was kind of waiting for her to glance up at me. I encouraged her slightly to do so. Now we're gonna build on top of this. Stay, remember, we're gonna start easy. Look at me, very good, getting our attention back on me with an easy distraction. Now we're gonna make it more distracting. Look at me, by dropping it, things with motion tend to make our dogs more distracted. Now I'm gonna add even more motion. Sit, stay. Good, that's so great. Stay, I, oh, that was a tough one. I understand, toilet paper's rolling, you wanna chase it, I get it. Stay, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, look at me. Yes, very good. Up here, stay. Look at me. Up here, I still don't have her. Yes, now I've got her. See that? When you have your dog's eyes, you have your dog. You might notice so far that we're asking Miss May to stay and then being very purposeful when we deliver another distraction. Our goal is to have her stay when a distraction catches her off guard. So she's more likely in a real life instance with enough practice to generalize the concept of staying when something unexpected happens. So now here I'm just trying to communicate to Miss May that we're kind of done training. That's kind of what I want her to think. And then I'm gonna throw a surprise stay at her. Hey, Miss May, stay. All right, that didn't go very well. In the last attempt, I said, stay, I threw the toy. She's like, no way, I can't stay. That wasn't enough notice. I didn't have enough time to process what you were asking me to do. Stay. Good. And do you see the difference? Rather than just saying stay and throwing it, we're saying stay, giving her a brief moment, then throwing yes. it. And ultimately, what we're trying to accomplish is stay, throw it immediately. Miss May, stay. Stay. You can see her, she's glancing up at me. I don't want those moments to go unnoticed by me. There are a number of ways you can practice the surprise stay at yes. home. Maybe you'll I throw a sock or a throw about. pillow or a remote control. Stay. Look at me. Very good. While I expect Miss May to really start to get this concept over the next week or two of working on this, do this as often as you possibly can for the next year of her life. There are gonna be so many things that come up over the next 10 to 15 years that she's gonna be tempted to investigate. These videos are possible in part because of our patrons on patreon.com slash Zach George. If you're interested in supporting the revolution in dog training, consider making a small monthly contribution of two, five, or $10 a month. Like me on Facebook and make sure you're subscribed. I've got 
lots of awesome videos in the works right now. Give Miss May a big thumbs up. She did really awesome today. So do you, Allison. Thank you. And take a look at these other videos too. Allison and Miss May were a great team. If your dog tends to be set off by loud sounds like vacuum cleaners, see my video on that. Of course, teaching your dog tricks is a great way to improve your communication together. So start with teaching your dog to roll over and play dead if you haven't already. If your dog doesn't listen well in the presence of company, then see my lesson with Rue the Border Collie for some useful tips. Thanks for subscribing and thanks again to all of our supporters on Patreon.com. See you guys in the next video.